Hello and welcome to In the Classroom, an educational podcast making teaching and learning more transparent. Today is January 26, 2020. Today I want to spend a few minutes talking about Schoology, which is the learning management system we'll be using uh, this semester. Uh, This podcast is specifically directed to learners that I'll be having this semester, and I wanted to provide an overview of uh, the platform that we'll be using. Before we get into it, if you have any opinions or additional comments about today's topic, feel free to reach out to me via Twitter. My handle is B-N-L-E-E-Z. You can also use the Twitter hashtag EdChat. So today I want to provide an overview of Schoology. Uh, This is specifically for those learners who are not familiar with the platform and uh, want to provide some examples. Depending on the course that you're going to be taking, there may be some slight changes. It could also depend on the device that you're going to use. Today I'm going to be showing you first what it looks like uh, on an iPad device, and then I'll show you what the same class looks like in a mobile device on an Android phone. If you have an iPhone, it will look very similar, um, but there could be some functionality that will vary, again, depending on the device, depending on the model of the phone, for example. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, The first thing that I want to discuss here is uh, the first day of class, I'll be giving everyone a code, an access code for the class. And uh, the very first step will be to go to Schoology, schoology schoology.com, and attempt to log in. There's going to be an option here to log in slash sign in. This is going to be the first time that you're probably going to be entering into Schoology. So when you go in the first time, you're going to be uh, given some options. You're going to want to select the student option. And then I can't do it now because I already have an account. But when you go in the first time, it's going to prompt you to include the access code. Okay, so this is going to be an access code that you're going to include the very first time going into uh, the class. When you enter the access code, you'll be asked to provide a username and login. You can choose whatever email that you wish for the login. Of course, your uh, your own password is going to be uh, specific to you, and no one else will know that as well, and you can always change that at any point. Those will be the steps getting started into Schoology, a- entering into the access code and then providing a username and password to sign in the first time. Once you've included that information, uh, you should be able to go directly into the class uh, itself. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in here with and my- this is what it's going to look like uh, once I signed in as a student. Now notice I'm using a browser on an iPad. If you're uh, on a PC, of course you can also access all of the same information signing in uh, and it will look slightly different than what you see here, but uh, know that you can also access this from uh, any computer that has access to the internet. Um, But now that I've signed in, what you're probably going to want to do is to install the Schoology app on your mobile device and then access the course content through the app. And that's what I'm going to be showing you here on an iPad. So on the left-hand side of your screen, there's a hamburger symbol there, and that's going to provide a drop-down menu with a lot of different options. And uh, the first being your profile. So one of the first things we'll do the first day of class, once you create your account, is to go in and add a little bit of information about yourself. And we'll do this as a, as a class, as a, as a group. And we'll go in and change information about yourself, adding uh, some uh, content about your interests and so on. We'll, we'll do that in class. The next option here, notifications. Uh, this is going to be where you can find your notifications. Now, if you go down to account settings, talking about notifications, you'll notice here the second tab will provide some default options for your notifications. So I think one of the first things also to do is to go in here and set not only the email notifications, but also review the mobile notifications to make sure that you're comfortable with how you're receiving uh, those notifications. If you feel that you're receiving too many emails and you don't want to receive notifications via email, but you want to receive some via your mobile device, well, this is where you can uh, change those settings. Okay, so it's up to you how you want to receive notifications. If you want to receive any at all, this is where you can make those changes. 
requests. Uh, this is going to be if you want to follow other members within the Schoology uh, community. Schoology is a platform that's been around for a long time, and there's a, a public site where a lot of the course content and also profiles can be viewed publicly. So uh, this is not going to be a requirement for the course, but this is where requests will be found. If others want, if, want to follow you, uh, you'll receive a uh, request, much like you would receive a, quest from, a request from uh, Facebook. Okay, let's go to the home version here. Now, in this particular device on an iPad, you'll see uh, what's called an update in Schoology. An update is similar to a news feed in Facebook. So this is where comments can be found. And if you go directly into the course here and click update, this information is what you're finding here under the home feature. Again, basically just a comment where you can reply directly. You can also post a comment and um, it'll ask you which course. So you select the course and then you can type in your uh, post and hit done and that will post it to the update area. So let's cancel out of this. So something else I want to mention, if you want to reach out to me and contact me or send me an email, and there's several ways to do it. Of course, you can respond publicly to one of these posts if I ask a question or if you just want to post a question yourself where everyone can see, then you're encouraged to do it directly in this update section. I, I encourage everyone to post your questions publicly if it's something that you think some of your classmates will also benefit from. If it's something that is of personal nature, something that you don't want to share with the public, then you can click on my name in this case and click the plus sign. And this is where you can send a private message. Okay, so this is actually my profile in Schoology. And under my profile, you can reach out to me um, and send, send something, send a message privately. You can also attach something uh, to the message, so you can choose from your library. In this case, on, on my iPad, I have options to add photos and videos. And um, don't worry about attaching resources. We'll talk about that in class. Um, but basically, this is where you can send me a private message. Now, there's another way that you can send me a private message. If we go into the class under Members, you'll notice that you can access all of the members' profiles, and this is where you can also send me a private message. Now, in this particular case for this demo, there's actually two members. One, I'm listed as the instructor, and the second, I'm listed as a student. This would be me as a student. So you can actually send your classmates messages as well. Um, again, under members, we'll, ha we'll have a list of all of our uh, all of our uh, group, each member will be listed here, and you can send each other message, private messages as you wish. Obviously, you can send each other me uh, messages here as well. Okay, so let's go back to the home page. Again, if I go back to our menu and click on this link, this will take me to the class. I can also access the class by going to Courses and clicking on the class. And you'll notice that the first screen that you see here is going to be a list of folders. All right, so again, we're under Materials. On the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see a list of materials, updates, grades, and members. If you break down the screen into three parts, in the middle, you'll have the actual course content. And then along the right-hand side, you'll see the calendar or upcoming events. All right, so Materials. Um, if you notice, if I click on the first folder, there'll be a drop-down menu and you'll see a list of individual learning objects. So you'll see that we have pages and we have PDF files that can be downloaded and viewed on your mobile device. And we'll see what that looks like here in a few minutes on your phone. Now this is an external link and I will include different links as necessary, but this particular link is to OneNote. And OneNote, this particular link or this file is going to be used for um, as, as board work. So anything that we look at on the board is going to be basically included here because I want to 
be able to archive all of the things that we talk about in class as board work in an organized fashion. So we're going to have basically a, a tab for each day. And this will be this will make uh, more sense and I think it will be clearer once we get into it. But uh, just keep this link available and I think it would be to your advantage to have OneNote already installed on your mobile device. And uh, we're going to be signing in using our Edu account, our Office 365 school account. And when you do that, you should be able to access this OneNote on your mobile device, but within the OneNote app. And I think it'll be a little bit user, a little bit more user friendly than accessing it as an external uh, website. In this particular case here, I can open up the the link and view the content that way. And this will be what we look at in class since we have a, a screen in our classroom. We'll be looking at our uh, OneNote board work here in the browser. But I think for you all, each of you will have a better experience if you upload it and use the OneNote app. Okay, so here we have also assignments. When you see a little pencil icon, this is going to designate an assignment. Some assignments will be for a grade, others will not. You'll notice here we have basically information about the assignment and then submissions. So under information, we'll have, for example, instructions and any other uh, text that is required to understand what we're to do. Under submissions, now you'll notice here I've got three different submissions. Now this platform, Schoology, will allow you to resubmit your assignments. And so when you're under the submissions option, and you click on the plus arrow, you should have different ways of submitting an assignment. The first is simply a text feature. And I can type in my text. And you'll notice here that I can save the draft. There's a, there's a check mark and a save draft. If I'm ready to submit and I, I don't need to make any other changes, I can click the check mark. But for now, I'm going to select save draft. And you'll notice there is a draft option here. There's a draft uh, file. So if I want to go back later and make additional changes, I can do that. So I can continue just saving the draft until I'm ready to actually submit. When I'm ready, then I can click the check mark. Now I've submitted my assignment. Now if you want to resubmit, you can actually resubmit again. And this is what I've done here actually four times. I can go back and resubmit another assignment if, if I need to. But I can also submit assignments as photos and videos. I can also submit as a recorded audio. So I can actually record my voice and then upload the file as an audio file to Schoology. And this is where you can do that. I, I'm not going to be able to do it now because I'm recording on this device. But this is how you can do that. For now, don't worry about submitting via resources. We'll look at that later if we need to uh, explore that. And um, on this particular device, don't worry about submit from iOS apps. Now, another feature very important, this comment icon will drop down a menu where you can see different uh, comments left by me to you uh, regarding your particular assignment. Okay, so very important to access that to see if there are any comments. You'll also notice that I have, as the instructor, an option to make edits to some of uh, the documents. You can see this here where I've, I've left uh, some, some uh, just arbitrary symbols, but I can, I can make no notifications here. This is another way that you can receive feedback from me uh, for your assignments. Okay, so this is how you can deal with assignments. Again, information, submissions. Make sure that you're under the Submissions tab to get the plus symbol to add your submission. Otherwise, it won't appear. If you're under the Information tab, notice that the plus sign disappears. All right, so these are assignments. And you might even see other uh, folders within folders with different uh, content that you can access. Okay, so basically for, the, for this particular class, information is organized by week. This may look different depending on the class. Sometimes content is organized by unit, but uh, it should make, uh, shouldn't be 
fairly straightforward. Uh, this will be something that I talk about in the first day of class to explain how the content is going to be organized. But the the last thing I want to show you here with regard to the material is this feature that allows you to filter the different forms or different types of content that are available to you. So by default, you'll see all materials selected. If you select assignments, you'll see all the assignments for this particular class. Discussions are listed as well. These are all the pages currently. And when we get into the class, obviously there will be a lot more content available since this is the beginning of the semester. There's not a lot of content to show you. But this filter, I think, is going to be useful if you're looking for specific types of content in the course. Uh, choose this filter to be able to kind of uh, streamline and find what you're looking for. Now, the last thing I'll mention here on this screen is on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see upcoming events. Most of these currently are set as assignments because most of the, in fact, all of the assignments have a date. Some content will also have a date associated with it, and when it does, it will appear here. Now, this is a calendar view that you can also access if you go to back to the main menu towards the bottom you'll have the same upcoming uh, list of assignments and on the right hand side you have a calendar view that uh, you can also refer to. You can click on specific days and see what is coming up, what's due. And so this is just meant to provide an easier way for you to uh, organize your time to see what's coming up, making sure that you are, are meeting the deadlines for the assignments. So let's go back to the class. So we talked about materials. Updates we talked about already. This is uh, basically just a news feed where we can post information. There might be some activities involved where I uh, post and ask for your response. Uh, but this is where you can do that. And you can post it again by clicking the plus arrow and adding your text and sending it here. Again, all, uh, all learners who are enrolled in the class can view this content. You can access your grades. So here all the grades depending on the class will be divided into separate categories and you can find your separate categories here with the individual assignments for each. And the team members we talked about already. You can see the list of your classmates and uh, send messages if you need to as, uh, as you wish. And this is where you can find that information. All right, so that's basically it. Let's take a look here. Don't worry about groups or resources. Again, this is another way you can access your grades Okay, for the class. And the calendar view we talked about. Account settings we mentioned earlier and in terms of the notifications, but this is also where you can change your account settings. I think by default, I would double check your time zone. I had to go back and change the time zone to Mexico City, so you may have to do the same. And what else? Privacy settings, don't worry about. By default, only those who are enrolled in the class will be able to view the course content. And that's it. Notifications we talked about. And if you want to log out, you can log out. Messages, just to, as a reminder, if you want to send a message, again, click the plus sign. You can click my name, for example, if you want to send me a private message. This is how you would do that. If you want to send anyone a private message, this is how you would do that. And this is where you'll find messages if someone were to send you an email uh, via Schoology. It's going to be in your inbox that you can access here. All right, so this is what it looks like on an iPad. Let's take a look and see what the same class looks like on an Android phone. Okay, on your cell phone, the first thing you'll need to do is go to Play Store. I'm gonna show you how to do this on Android. It's gonna be very similar to uh, an iPhone as far as uh, installing the app and using the app. But you'll need to search for Schoology and install it on your cell phone. And then you'll have an icon here for Schoology that you can tap and this will take you into the app itself. Now, if I hit the hamburger button there on the left hand, top left hand corner of your screen. These are the options here. Many of the same options that you'll find on the desktop version. 
you go to courses, you'll need to go into the course and this is what it looks like on your cell phone. You can scroll down and access all the same information here as you would on uh, your desktop. Now any files, like in this case, it's going to prompt me to download the file. So this is going to open up a PDF on your phone after having downloaded it to your phone. So uh, once you download it, obviously it's going to reside on your phone. So you don't, you just have to do it one time and then you can access it, save it to your uh, a folder, maybe create a folder specifically for the class and then and keep all of the the files that you download into that one folder. Here we have a link. This is going to probably open up. Yeah, this is going to open up our OneNote. If you have OneNote installed on your phone, this is probably the best way to, to manage this because then you can open up OneNote directly and access uh, the same information. But if not, you can just access it on your browser on your phone. So again, this is the course content. Now notice here you have a drop down menu. You can select updates, upcoming, gradebook, and attendance. And you can also scroll with your finger left to right and access the same information. If you want to post something, you can click the plus sign and add a discussion or assignment. Here, if you want to do create an update or you want to post something under updates, you can click here and attach a, a photo, a video, a file, resource, etc. And what else? Here we have upcoming. I'm going to see what here. Okay, so you can also post an event if you wish. Okay, so fairly user friendly here. Nothing too to uh, complicate it, I don't believe. Um, what else? So we have, that's basically it really for, for the classes. Now, if you go back outside of your classes here, you can access some of the uh, additional features of Schoology. And some of this is going to uh, be included in our class. Other aspects will not, but here you can check your grades. All right, so you can check your grades there. And you can also check your calendar. This is the calendar event. So looks like we have different events going on at different days. So this is a quick access using the calendar. And settings, of course, here. Uh, this is interesting because notifications um, is a little bit different for your mobile device. So if you want to receive notifications specific to your cell phone, this is where you can make those changes. You'll notice by default, notifications are enabled. So here, if you don't want to be notified, um, then you'll need to go in here and make those appropriate changes. All right, so I think that's it. Um, here, if you, your profile also, if you click updates, info, here you find your profile. If you want to check your emails, you can click here. And if you want to send an email, hit the plus sign. This will open up a window to do that. Requests and notifications. These are notifications here for um, any post, any activity that are occurring in your particular class. So I think we'll stop there. This has been just a quick overview of Schoology and how we're going to navigate and get around some of the course content for our face-to-face -face class. If you do have any questions or issues using Schoology, uh, feel free to obviously ask me in class or come by my office and we can take a look at it. Again, we'll be using this learning management system uh, all semester.